you know, we, we were stupid when we got into this. Way back in August of 2005, we thought we could solve problems by writing scholarship checks. We were just clueless, just about as stupid as a box of rocks. So this is our office. We're in downtown Seattle in the Central Building. My name's Ari Cohn. I'm the founder and managing director of the Post Prison Education Program. So we've been here for about six years. We're a small nonprofit. For the last seven years, we've been a scholarship provider to help men and women coming out of prison to get into college. And this is kind of uh, order entry. I mean, this is where applications are processed. And we, over the years, learned that mentoring and legal support and counseling are as important or more important than money. Hey, this is Ari Cohn. We average about 900 phone calls from prisoners a month, and we receive about 13 applications on average in any, any day's mail. Have a good weekend. There are at least three really strong reasons why we should help people coming out of prison. One is financial. Prisons cost more than $200 million a piece. It costs a lot of money, over 30000 a year, to imprison somebody. Or another aspect is, is just the human aspect of, of destroyed lives. If a man or woman goes to prison, they often have kids. The kids whose parents are in prison are five to seven times more likely to go to prison than kids whose parents have never been locked up. And then community safety is just a, is an overriding Thing that anybody should identify with. If you stop crimes from being committed, stop recidivism, then all of our communities are safer. Absolutely nothing comes close to reducing recidivism like two years or more of post-secondary education. Our recidivism rate, based on more than seven years, is under 2%. The state is reporting 45.9% on their website readmission rate, almost half. Put him on a, on a Google netbook, let him write the essay. In terms of admissions, other than me making a gut decision, our key determinants are we won't spend money on somebody we, we determine we can't help. And the second and most and equally important is we have to see the potential in the person that they become what we call a leader for change. Whoever they meet, whether it's somebody at Google or at the film school or on a college campus, will we'll just say, geez, I thought prisoners were this horrible, malicious group of people, but this, this man or this woman, they're wonderful. How did I end up in prison? I was on the streets, and being on the streets as a young kid, I had no direction, and so the direction I chose, because I thought I knew it all, was drugs. And getting involved with um, the drug scene and all of that criminal life that goes along with it, um, I went to prison for uh, drug charges and for possession of stolen property charges. Gina was in a presentation we did at Purdy about a year ago. I, I let him know right then and there that they were going to hear from me and that I was going to be one of their students. He didn't have a choice. I was going to be a student. The main way she impressed us was her drive. Uh, she went straight to Seattle Central and just stayed focused, 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 and has made straight A's, non-stop straight A's, insanely good grades while working. And I should mention these clothes, Men's Warehouse for three years has done this amazing national suit drive that enables us to get really good clothes to students who need them. I spent 55 months in prison. I was indicted in the early 90s and went to prison in 95 and came out in 2000. I was charged with wire fraud. Within a couple of weeks of coming out of prison in Pennsylvania, I was on the campus of the University of Washington. And four years later, I graduated with a 382 GPA, all A's, and four honor societies. And so to, to go from a segregated housing unit cell to the campus of the University of Washington and a couple week transition was like going from hell to heaven and it was transformative in a way I can't even describe. And then back here, back here in the corner is my cubby hole. And, People uh, normally are trying to suggest that we do it out of, you know, all these warm fuzzy feelings like love and compassion and it's really done out of hate, anger and rage. Literally, people die as a result of the state's inadequate funding. 
they just don't care. They're willing to let people die and live miserable, miserable lives with untreated addiction, poverty, untreated mental illness. They will not risk being thrown out of office as a result of being attacked for being soft on crime. They want to appear to be tough on crime. It's horrifying. <laughs> While we provide tuition and books, the most important thing we do is provide hope and opportunity. When I was really down and out, I did a couple of bids. I didn't just do one, I did a couple. I was locked up in Ohio as well um, for transporting. Um, I, was, I, kept, I kept going back to the same neighborhood. That was the hardest part going back to the same influences. So I spent a lot of time reading in prison. I spent a lot of time learning about discipline. I spent a lot of time learning about that the world is bigger than the block, but I kept going back to the block. If you're sitting in prison for the 89th time, then we walk into a prison setting and do a two or three hour presentation, and we take former prisoners in, which we do regularly. I did a lot of years making, faking it till I made it. You gotta fake it till you make it. You gotta keep making yourself believe in something that you're not right now because eventually you end up there. Watch me! So I faked that I was gonna be a performer. I faked that I was gonna be on Broadway. I faked that I was gonna be all these things. And on my way as I was faking it, I was actually making it. I didn't have enough acting jobs yet. I, had to, I was going to school on the side and learning. And they make people believe that post-secondary education really can change their lives then they change their thinking. Deep down there is an old man river, blue denim flow, Martha's Vinnie, a stepchild, rusty picket fence glow, desert sand to a black beach bringer, ghetto Shakespearean clown, little shopaholic fanatic, daydreaming of white girls from Skid Row with black eyes singing downtown. New they York come out South oriented uh, in a way that they've never been before. And their whole focus is on, I'm gonna reunite with my kids, I'm gonna reunite with my family, I'm gonna to go to college, and I'm not coming back to prison. Killer be martyred, I am big pentameter on the regular, so the gift goes farther. An Aristotle thug, dealing with the real. Plato is the enemy of the soul, like a Def Jam deal. It was beautiful, man, seeing somebody that was once in our situation, get out and do something positive with their life and come back and give a speech to the people who someday will be back out there again. It was a good, you know, speech for us, young men like us. This is today's mail. I think we had about 20 new applications come in. And, uh, you know, not one donation, no funding, but just people begging for help. There's no question that the biggest obstacle is funding. I spend two-thirds of my time fighting money problems. You know, David's budget for the next three months is $4,214. We can't stand much of that. So it's really sad to, like, have somebody that you know if you say no to them, their life is going to go down the tubes. So it's, it's, if you have somebody in, in the office or in a prison setting or in a work release begging or on the phones, begging for help, and you have to say no. That's just, that's the worst. And it makes life around here pretty miserable, actually. Is there something you want to do for after school, a sporting event? So one of the biggest things that Ari did for me was help me reconnect with my daughter who I have not seen or heard from in 13 years. Uh, my daughter is 16 now, she was three when I lost her. And that's probably been the biggest gift Ari doesn't just save lives of prisoners, he saves lives of family members of the prisoners as well. A Snohomish County judge, I ought to name him, told, told, told Gina that she wasn't worth the air that her body was taking up as he sentenced her to a decade in prison. I couldn't get you out of the pool. I couldn't get you off the, the little merry-go-rounds. Today, she's just, she's a great mom. She's a fantastic student. Hi, my name is Gina. Uh, she's clean and sober. She's a manager at a store. She's just doing everything right. And when you, when you see the transformation, it's pretty, it's just, it's amazing. It's, 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 it's actually addicting. He makes you feel like you are worth it. He gives you, he gives you the confidence that you're lacking when you first come out and he holds it there until you can hold on to it yourself. This year alone, more than 700,000 people will leave prison, more than half of them mentally ill. These prisoners 
leave prison with a bus ticket, 75 in cash, in Washington it's 40, right. which, which you know, and two weeks worth of medication, right? So you're seriously- I don't take days off. Of and, and, uh, and I don't really want to. This day is about nothing but trying to inspire you to not come back to a goddamn prison. And, and I hope you uh, come close. I'd rather be helping somebody accomplish something than be in Maui. I was in a pretty comfortable position financially at one point in life. Now I'm as close to bankrupt as you can get without being there. But it's, you know, it's uh, whatever you call it sacrifices, whatever sacrifice I've made. I don't even look at it as sacrifices. I really don't. It's just what we do is pretty damn cool.